Ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure to present a case for the IDKD refresher series diseases of the abdomen and pelvis. My name is Thomas Mank. I'm a radiologist from the Department of Biomedical Imaging and Image Guided Therapy from the Medical University of Vienna. I am presenting a case on a 40-year-old male patient that came to our hospital because of acute onset of pain in the left lower quadrant. The patient showed also localized tenderness within this area. Surprisingly, the body temperature as well as the white blood cell count was normal. Because the symptoms were significant and the clinical presentation was suspicious for acute diverticulitis, the patient underwent a contrast-enhanced abdominal CT scan. Here are the CT images of the patient. The first step is now to search for any abnormality within this data set. For this purpose, I'm scrolling now towards the pelvic region. And of course, there is an abnormality which is located within the left lower quadrant. How can we describe this finding? It's located in front of the sigmoid colon, in the perisigmoidal fat tissue. It has an oval shape contains fat tissue, and it is surrounded by fat stranding. It is abutting the anterior sigmoidal wall, but there is no significant associated wall thickening of the sigmoid colon. So here are also the coronal CT images showing the lesion in the left lower quadrant. The lesion is located within the perisigmoidal fat tissue. It shows an oval shape. It contains fat tissue, and it's surrounded by inflammatory fat stranding. So what is the most likely diagnosis? Is it focal diverticulitis, lipoma, colonic perforation, or mental infarction, or epiploic appendagitis? And the correct answer is epiploic appendagitis, which can also be called appendicitis epiploica. Epiploic appendagitis is an inflammatory condition of the epiploic appendages. These are up to 3 cm measuring protrusions of fat tissue on the outer wall of the colon. They are outlined with peritoneum and uh, present with a fatty attenuation in CT scans, but they are usually not visible because they are surrounded and masked by abdominal or pelvic fat tissue. In patients with ascites, however, epiploic appendages can become visible because they are surrounded by intraperitoneal fluid. As shown on this example here, here is another example showing multiple epiploic appendages uh, from the sigmoid colon which are surrounded by intraperitoneal fluid. So what happens now in epiploic appendagitis? Within the epiploic appendages, there are one or two small central vessels. There may be either venous thrombosis of these central vessels or torsion of the entire epiploic appendages finally leading to infarction and inflammation. Epiploic appendagitis may occur in any colonic segment, most commonly within the sigmoid colon. It's typically located anterior or anterolateral to the adjacent colonic segment. Clinically, it mimics diverticulitis, appendicitis, or cholecystitis. The laboratory findings are usually normal. So what are the typical radiological imaging characteristics? Epiploic appendagitis presents as an up to 3 to 4 cm measuring fat containing lesion that is located in the pericolonic fat tissue. They are adjacent to the sigmoid colon. These lesions are outlined by a hyperattenuating rim, which is also referred as rim sign. They are surrounded by inflammatory fat stranding. Within the center of the lesion, there can be either a linear or dot-like structure which corresponds to the thrombosed vein and is also referred as central dot sign. Typically, there is no or only minimal reactive thickening of the adjacent colonic wall. Epiploic appendagitis is typically a self-limiting condition. It's treated only symptomatically with oral anti-inflammatory medication. It does not require antibiotic therapy or surgical intervention. The symptoms usually resolve within one or two weeks. Inflamed epiploic appendages may calcify over time and separate from the colon forming loose bodies. It's an important radiologic finding because the correct diagnosis helps to avoid unnecessary treatment. Important differential diagnoses include acute diverticulitis, 
endomental infarction. Acute diverticulitis can be recognized by the presence of diverticular and inflammatory wall thickening within the affected colonic segment. Omental infarction may have a quite similar appearance compared to epiploic appendagitis, but the lesions are typically larger with a size of 5 cm or even more and they are frequently located in the right lateral abdomen. Of course, also neoplastic disease as liposarcomas should be considered. Finally, I've listed some relevant literature related to this case. I want to thank you for your attention and stay tuned with IDKD for more cases.